We move on after that to the next parable. And this parable is also in Bukhari and Muslim agreed upon where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith of Abi Musa Al-Ash'ari radiallahu an He says Innama mathali wa mathalu ma ba'athani Allahu bihi kamathali rajulin ata qawman faqala ya qawm inni ra'aytu al-jaysha bi'aynayya wa inni ana al-nadhiru al-uryan fannaj'a فأطاعه فأطاعه طائفة من قومه فأدلجوا فانطلقوا على مهلهم فنجوا وكذبت طائفة منهم فأصبحوا مكانهم فصبحهم الجيش فأهلكهم واجتاحهم فذلك مثل من أطاعني فاتبع ما جئت به ومثل من عصاني وكذب بما جئت به من الحق the Prophet Sallallahu says, My example and the example of what I have been sent with of this deen is that of a man who came to his people and said, O oh people, I have seen the enemy's army with my own eyes. And I am the naked warner. So save yourselves. So a group of his people obeyed him and fled at night, proceeding quietly until they were safe. While another group of them disbelieved in him and stayed in their places until the morning when the army came down on them, killing them, destroying them completely. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, So this is the example of the one who obeys me and follows what I have brought. And the example of the one who disobeys me and disbelieves in what I have brought of the truth. And so the Prophet وسلم, was sent to all of mankind as a warner to warn them of a terrible punishment that awaits them. And the Prophet وسلم, this was the first thing that he said when he was commanded to convey the da'wah openly in Mecca. And so he called upon the leaders of Quraysh. He told them to gather. And after they had all gathered, he asked them that, suppose I was to tell you that there is an enemy. There is an enemy planning on attacking you right behind this valley or this mountain. Would you believe in me? So they said, yes, of course. We have never known you to lie. Why wouldn't we believe in you? So then he said, when they answered in this way, he said, He said that I am Therefore, a warner to you of a terrible punishment that awaits you. And then Abu Lahab, he was among the attendees. What did he say? He said, is this why you have gathered us today? And he said, you know, he cursed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so as a result, Allah revealed Surah Al-Lahab. And said, how may the, may the hands of Abu Lahab perish. Because that was a word, those were the words used by Abu Lahab against the Prophet ﷺ. And so the point is that the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a warner to us. That was his mission, to warn mankind. And this is one of his names, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, al nadir Al-Mundir. And throughout the Qur'an, Allah refers to him as that. Throughout the Qur'an, Allah commands him to say, I am nothing but a warner. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا nadir. And so, in this parable, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compares himself 
to this man who has spotted the enemy. And then he rushes back to his people to warn them of an imminent attack. In another narration of this hadith found in Musnad Imam Ahmed, it mentions that there's a group of people and they send out someone to go and look out for the enemy. And so he goes and he looks for the enemy and then apparently the enemy is on its way. So he comes running back and he takes off his shirt and he waves it from far, warning his people that the enemy has come. And so the Prophet ﷺ compares himself to this man who has spotted the enemy and he rushes back to his people warning them of this imminent attack. And in order to convince his people that he is telling the truth and that they should take it seriously, what does he do? He uses different things. And so he takes off his shirt and stands naked. And this was the way of the Arabs to show how serious the matter is. They will stand naked with their shirt to show that I'm serious, I'm not playing around. The second is, he says that I have seen the enemy with my two eyes. So to prove that you know this is not just hearsay. This is not something that, that I have just heard. But no, I have seen the enemy with my two eyes. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw what awaits the people of punishment in the Akhirah. He saw it with his two eyes. Thirdly, he says that he is a warner. He says, أَنَا nadir al-Uryan. I am the naked war warner. He says, I'm a warner. I'm here to warn you. Fourthly, he, he tells them, after telling them that the, he spotted the enemy with his two eyes and that he's the naked warner, he then tells them, Fanaja. He then commands them, find shelter, save yourselves, flee, escape. And this signals, what does it, what does it indicate? It indicates that these people are not ready to take on this army. Otherwise, they would have been prepared. They would have been prepared to de defend themselves. But no, this shows us that they're not able to withstand this army. And so that's why he tells them to escape. Also, fifthly, what does he use to convince them? He doesn't waste time. He doesn't waste time. He doesn't go and tell his people, come, I have some news for you. He doesn't go and tell them a long story. No, right away. And as we see in that other narration, from far away, he calls his people. And he tells them at the top of his lungs, he shouts, that I've spotted the enemy. Flee, escape. In one sentence, without wasting time. And so the Prophet ﷺ did the same. But now how does his people react? This man, this warner, this naked warner, how does his people react? You have two groups. They divide into two groups. One that takes him seriously, believing in him, because he, they know that he's truthful. They've seen everything, all of these signs. He convinced them that yes, I'm serious. So they believe in him and they comply by his command to take shelter, to escape, to flee. And so they do so and they're safe. But the other group, the other group, 
they don't take him seriously. And so, they disbelieve in him, and they disobey his command to flee. What was their result? They end up staying, they end up sleeping, and the next morning, the enemy attacks, wiping them all out. And so, the first group prepared themselves to escape. They prepared themselves. They left right away, as Prophet ﷺ says here. They left in the early night. When dark descended, and they left quietly. So they took all of their precautions, and they did it the right way, until they made it to safety. While the other group, they remained behind until the early morning, and so the enemy launched its attack, killing them and annihilating them all. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, so this is an example of the one who obeys me and follows what I have brought and the example of the one who disobeys me and disbelieves in what I have brought of the truth. And so among the lessons that we learn from this parable is, first of all, the Prophet ﷺ was sent with the truth from Allah, warning us, of a dangerous punishment that awaits those who disbelieve in him and refuse to obey him. And so his claim to prophethood was substantiated with clear-cut proofs that are convincing. His claim that he was a prophet and that what he has brought is the truth from Allah, it was substantiated with clear-cut proofs whether it be miracles, whether it be his character of being truthful and trustworthy, even before prophethood, and all the other proofs, clear, crystal clear. And so these proofs, they are sufficient. These proofs are sufficient for any honest person who wants to find the truth. And so just like the naked warner who warned his people, he tried his best to convince his people that what he was telling them was the truth. The second lesson that we learn is that whoever believes in the Prophet wasallam and follows up that belief with obedience, submission and obedience, then what is the result? He will be, he will be safe. He will be safe in this dunya and the akhirah. Just like those people who believed in the warner and they obeyed his command to escape. And likewise, those who disbelieve in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and refuse to obey him, they will be met by a terrible fate. Just like those who disbelieved in the warner and decided to sleep and not take him seriously, they met, they met a terrible fate. The third lesson that we learn from this hadith is that the only ones who benefit from the warning are those who actually fear Allah and His punishment. Those who will actually benefit from the warning of the Prophet wasallam of the coming of of punishment in the Akhirah, who are they? Those who fear Allah and His punishment. And that's why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَةِ You can only warn, Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can only warn those who Fear Allah with respect to the unseen. You can only warn those who fear Allah while not being able to see Him. Or it could mean, as the scholars of tafsir, they differed over the meaning here, or it could mean 
that these people fear Allah in private as they do in public. But the point is that they fear Allah and His punishment. Also Allah says, إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ You, O Muhammad, can only warn those who follow the reminder, the Qur'an, and those who fear Ar-Rahman, those who fear Allah without seeing Him. So this shows us that the only people who will benefit from the warning are those who fear. Just like that group of people who they feared the imminent attack. So they, they heard what the warner told them of the enemy. They believed in him. And they actually feared for their lives. How about someone who said, Okay, I believe you, but I'm going to sleep tonight. Right? So this is similar to those Muslims out there who say, we believe, but then they don't do anything. They don't obey. They say we believe, but then they don't obey. Thinking that as long as I'm a Muslim, that's it, I'm going to be saved from the punishment. And so it requires iman, and then to follow up that iman with action. And that's why here the Prophet ﷺ did not say that this is the example of the ones who believe in me, but rather he said this is the example, man ata'ani. Those who obey me. Likewise, the kuffar, they will not benefit from the warning no matter how much you try to warn them. As Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The disbelievers, the kuffar, whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they will never believe. And this obviously refers to the kuffar who Allah has placed a seal on their hearts where they will never be guided. The fourth lesson that we learn from this parable is that the punishment for those who, who disbelieve and disobey, it is near, it is imminent, and not far off. And so it's only a matter of day and night. Just like the warner who warned his people and said that the enemy is here. His attack, the enemy's attack, when did it come? It was only a matter of day and night. Likewise, the punishment of the Akhirah, it is near and not far off. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an. إِنَّا أَنذَرْنَاكُمْ عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا We have warned you of an imminent punishment, a near punishment. It's near. يَوْمَ يَنْظُرُ الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا The Day of Judgment. Allah tells us here that it's near. And Allah tells us of the kuffar. إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا They see it as being distant. They see it as being far off. But it is close. It is near. But unfortunately, most people, they're deluded into thinking that since we're not being punished, we're living our lives, you know, completely fine and dandy. Everything's going fine and okay. There's no sign of any imminent punishment. So it means that we should continue living as we're living. These people have become deluded by shaitan and by the life of this dunya. Finally, the last lesson that we learn from this parable is that now is the time to act and submit and obey while we still have the chance. Now is the time to act, to submit, to obey while we still have a chance because 
when death comes, it's over. And when the punishment comes, it'll be too late. Just like those who did not take the naked warner seriously. They didn't take him seriously and they thought, let's wait and see. And so before they knew it, the enemy had to attack and wipe them all out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the kuffar. In fact, all of the nations of the past, that's how they used to look at the warning of the messengers. When the messengers would tell them to fear Allah, to fear His punishment, and then they would mockingly ask, when will this punishment come? Where is it? We don't see any sign of it. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ It's repeated throughout the Qur'an. They say, when will this promise of a punishment come if you are truthful? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Dhafir at the very end, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْ بَأْسَنَا فَلَمَّا رَأَوْ بَأْسَنَا قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ وَكَفَرْنَا بِمَا كُنَّا بِهِ مُشْرِكِينَ when the kuffar, when they saw the punishment, and here it refers to all of these past nations who were destroyed by Allah, Allah tells us that when they saw the punishment, they cried out, we believe in Allah alone and we reject what we used to associate with Him. We reject our previous shirk. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمْ يَكُ يَنْفَعُهُمْ إِيمَانُهُمْ لَمَّا رَأَوْ بَأْسَنَا That iman at that point does not benefit them at all. When they saw our punishment, سُنَّةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي قَدْ خَلَتْ فِي عِبَادِهِ وَخَسِرَ هُنَالِكَ, ال... ك... وخسر هنالك الْكَافِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this has always been the way of Allah in dealing with his wicked servants, then and there, the disbelievers were in total loss. And so this shows us that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is near and it is not far off. And we have to act now before it's too late. Because when the punishment comes, it becomes too late. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us iman that leads to action, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from his punishment in this life and the next. And with that, we uh, will conclude for today. Does anyone have any questions?